A historic moment in the NFL as the first active player comes out as gay. Las Vegas Raiders defensive end Carl Nassib making the announcement on Instagram saying he finally feels comfortable going public. I just think that representation and visibility are so important. Um, I actually hope that like one day videos like this and the whole coming out process are just not necessary. Um, but until then, you know, I'm going to do my best and do my part to cultivate a culture that's accepting, that's compassionate. NFL oh. Commissioner Roger Goodell released a statement supporting Nassib saying, the NFL family is proud of Carl for courageously sharing his truth today. Representation matters. We share his hope that someday soon statements like his will no longer be newsworthy as we march toward full equality for the LGBTQ plus community. So he made history. Michael Sam did it before, but he was still in college when he went into the draft. So he was the other high profile gay athlete in the NFL. Yeah, good for him. In the meantime, we got the historic Supreme Court decision on our watch yesterday that might reshape the future of college athletics. In a unanimous ruling, the court ruled 9 nothing that the NCAA cannot put caps on all education benefits for student athletes. Want to bring in Clay Travis right now from Outkick and Fox News and the Clay Travis Buck Sexton Show and <laughs> all that stuff. Busiest right. man in show. Right I mean, your resume is growing by the week, uh, man. Thanks for coming back. Your question for you. <laughs> did, did college sports just go pro or did it just go semi-pro? Well, first of all, thanks for having me, Bill and Dana. Uh, it is a great question, and it's one, frankly, that will be resolved in the years ahead because there are really two interesting opinions here. The majority opinion, written by Justice Gorsuch, 9-0 was relatively limited. But if you look at the concurrent opinion by Justice Brett Kavanaugh, it basically called into question the entire collegiate athletics model. And what's so interesting about this is we're going to have Title IX issues we're going to have to resolve. We're going to have taxation issue, name, image, and likeness. Because remember, for all the talk surrounding college athletics, only two real sports actually make money, football and men's basketball. And usually what the athletic departments would argue is they are taking all the money that they make off those two sports and redistributing it ar around the rest of the athletic department so that women's lacrosse and men's track and field, those guys and girls get scholarships when they otherwise wouldn't because there isn't a substantial fan base there. So how are you going to reconcile, let's say, the quarterback at Ohio State and compare him to a women's soccer midfielder mm. or a men's 100-meter sprinter, how are you going to ma manage that under Title IX and also under name, image, and likeness? We got a huge can of worms opened here, but I think the ultimate story is the demise of the NCAA and the collegiate mm. model as we know it is certainly at hand. Okay, so that maybe helps answer my question, but I'll ask uh, you to elaborate just a bit. I'm on a text thread with some friends, and a couple of them are just apoplectic that this is the end of yes. college sports. Is it? No, I, I don't think it is. And, and I do think that the question that is going to be asked, remember, only two sports are revenue producing. And so I think what this is also going to start to raise the issue is, remember, the NFL and the NBA, which is where you go if you're a pro football player or a pro basketball player, both have age restrictions. So they basically are requiring, in many ways, kids to go to college at 18 years old. If you eliminate age restrictions, which we've had lawsuits about too, then there's a more direct path for kids who want to go to college, get an education and play sports versus go pro immediately. I don't think this ruling is going to impact 95% of college scholarship athletes, but the ones that the most people pay attention to in football and men's basketball, it could have a substantial impact. Interesting. Clay, great to have you back, man. Good luck on the radio. Yeah, I mean, good job. I mean, you kicked off yesterday, literally, right? Yeah, first day of the show, uh, Clay Travis and Buck Sexton show, noon Eastern for people driving around in their cars. Podcast is up. I uh, hope they enjoy it. And I hope you guys keep up the good work, too. Awesome Appreciate you all having me. You bet. We'll Thanks, bring you back. Clay. Thank you, Clay. Thanks, Bill Just want to do one thing. Cam, I had a very interesting line. He said the NCAA's business model would be flatly illegal in almost any Anywhere other else. industry in America. Nine nothing.